So D, let's you start with like what you thought when you started it. Well, hello there. It is indeed your boy time. And it is time to go over serve the story. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. Our I'm first in music initial playing. first initial recap. Yes. Right, this, what, so this, this is, is what it feels sense. like to recap a show or something, I guess. But this is our own yeah. thing that we created. So it's going to be it's interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Let's dive into I, our minds. I, I, I finally get an opportunity to tell y'all my dislikes and displeasures in the direction in which you took my beautiful oh, story. Dude, I don't know what you're talking about. And you Ugh. changed Sarah. You <laughs> changed her forever. I I solely so this is what I'm thinking. I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like, how can I start this story? How can I how can I take full control of it? Because I'm like, okay, this is our first one. Uh it's our first improv and I I know that I, I want to really throw whoever goes behind me for a loop, right? So I'm I'm currently I'm thinking, I'm like, what what can I do? I can't think of characters' names. Uh let me figure it out. So I came up with Sarah and I'm like, okay, all right, I'm gonna see what we do here. We're going to be at the, you know, the apartment. She's going to go up and down, introduce, like, had no idea that Gary, you was going to take it where you took it, which was interesting. Like, um, so I, I feel like, all right, okay, so Sarah's going to be safe. She's my baby. I, I birthed this story. I, I'm going to handle it with kid gloves. And then, boom, Gary off the top rope. So, so let me give a little behind the scenes. So when we came up with the idea of serve the story, we did a little tester between ourselves. This has not been released and has not been talked about. So this is the <sighs> first time we did a tester and we did the same thing where D gave us a minute and a half. I did a minute and a half and then time did a minute and a half. I don't know what he's talking about. What he gave me, I completely flipped it on that too. He <laughs> acts like a, that, it's a surprise. Uh, that right. there's some kind of twist or flip in there. That's just who I am. I, I, yeah. I'm a movie guy. I, I don't want you to guess what's coming next. I got to keep you on your toes. So what's interesting that people don't understand is, is we're just as excited as you are when we're doing it because I have no idea where the story's going. He has no idea, nor does time know mm-hmm. where the story's going. And so when it's when it's flipping on your end, like on its side, you're just like, whoa, what the hell? And And this is what you guys have to understand. When we're shooting these, they're live. And they're they're on the spot, so we don't actually just give y'all some hints. Like we don't actually uh, listen to the entire story. We listen for like trigger words, dates, stuff like that, so we can tie it in to our story when it's our time to go. So so us going back and having an opportunity to look at this and have it come to life was absolutely fascinating because now we take our words as the narrator. And then we, we have sounds, we have sights, and we have these visual aids, and we just like, whoa. And what was crazy is is allowing our animator to animate this thing, we don't get a chance to, to be a part of that creative process. So what we think is going on in our head is now giving us a visual like, whoa, I didn't picture her to look like this, or I wasn't expecting him to do that. And I said it, and I was like, whoa, because you just be so in tune. So... It's, fa- it's fascinating now us being able to talk about it. But, yeah, I was pissed at Gary and Tom for a long time because well, I felt like they ruined there. Well, yeah, so, like, I knew I wanted to make it some kind of, like, a cheating aspect because I just – you hear that – that's that's a cliche, very cliche thing that happens in, in movies and stuff like that, but I wanted to find a way to twist it and turn it, which – when, when it goes my part after you, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, here's what I can do. I can lead them the way I want them to go. I got, I got the path. Are they going to stay on the path? And, of course, you know, time doesn't at times. He lets you stray and then get back on the path <laughs> or, like, stay in the way or something. Right. He likes to stray a little bit. But th- that's the hard part. I have to wait two times before I can go again. So it takes me, I'm like, everything I'm thinking I want to do, just like D, could be completely turned. Fortunately... Time got on, it was only straight just a little bit and gets right back on quickly. And then once yeah. we established that path, then now it's all just trying to figure out how we want it to go. And I knew there was little little tidbits I wanted to throw in, 
like the smelling of the shirt because I've heard it. I've seen people do that. Yeah. And I know people have commented about it. Like how did, what Bro. made you think of that? Because it is something that triggers something in you. Oh, that's, that's not supposed to be here. And you it smell like it. You were speaking from experience. That <laughs> and I, heard that. I was like, this is another thing. Like I wanted to, I wanted to like, dr- like grab you into the story because if it's totally something you've experienced in. or you had friends experience, you're going to be just drove, like d- drug into it more and more engaged into the story. I think yeah, I, I think would... the hard part for me that I've realized is, you know, because when you're hearing the story, you have so many ideas on where you want to go. And you also have like questions like you have questions about who these characters are, what their motives are. So, that's, you know, a lot of times I feel like I try to give some background, some glue. Uh, but that's why that, you get the drier parts. That's right? why you be, that's why you see a trash when you be uh-huh. talking. Uh-huh. Well, not, I'm not going to say trash. I'm not going to say trash. I'm going to say dry. <laughs> I get it, yeah, because you wanna you wanna put those backstories together. I get it. But the thing about this is those like the Sarah that y'all might think is in your head is totally different than the one I have in my head. So whenever you know I hear your story and I go off on on a track, you you might have an idea of where you're supposed to go with it, and then whenever I take it and make her a different person, then all of a sudden you're trained. At least this is my this is my experience. My mind is going all over the place. I was like, whoa, that's not where I expect him to go. Now what am I going to do? Because I had like a plan of where I wanted to go with certain information I was putting in or certain things that I wanted to talk about. So I have one question for you, Time. Where the hell did you come up with the name of the snake? I love the name, by the way. Oh, dude, it was insane, (laughs) right? That was awesome. (laughs) Don't ask me to repeat the name because I had to. My thing, I I was like, I just want to think of the most outlandish name that I can think of. I threw as many things together as I could think of. And that's, it's kind of like, it just, it was, it was word vomit. Whatever I could think of just spewed out of my mouth for the name of the snake. I I I I got another question for you, Tom. What made you kill her? What made you kill Sarah, bro? She was, she had went through all this stuff. So first of all, Gary put her through shit. Okay, <laughs> Gary, you put her through hell, uh, and then you just decided to cap it off, Tom, by killing her. What well, did she do I, that on, was hold, worth her? Let me time? clarify before you say that, because I didn't. I gave her a chance to get revenge. She was ready for the revenge, and then we had to. Somebody had to twist that and turn it so she doesn't get her revenge. I'm just saying, I tried to give her oh. redemption for everything that was so, going on. You know, somebody else strayed off path again and wanted to get her to get hers so when she did nothing okay. wrong. Here's where here's where my inspiration came from. That so Gary obviously brought up the Saw movie. Correct. Um, and yeah. as you've heard me say in the past on our Halloween podcast, Saw is one of my favorite movies ever. So I okay. knew there was no way I was not going to tie Saul in at some point. So if you've seen Saul 1, spoiler alert coming ahead if you have not, but screw you if you hadn't because it's been <laughs> so long. The the guy that's laying in the middle of the room that you assume is dead the whole time is actually Jigsaw. And at the end of the movie, he stands up all like, oh, wow. And I just remember being so freaked out because I was like, what? He's... He's actually the guy, and so that's why I wanted to make uh, the roommate come back because we thought she was dead, and then, you know, be, be just, like, flip it on this head because we thought she was gone, just like you thought this person in the middle of the uh, room for Saul was gone, and then all of a sudden you realize they've been the one at the forefront of the planning the whole time, and that's why at the end, the idea of where I was going with the – Game over. It was as it was almost from Sarah's perspective, as she's getting groggy and dying away, she's uh, hearing game over be distorted because she's passing away. So the problem I had with the ending though was you basically allowed the cheaters to win. That's, That's exactly the I what had. drove me crazy. <laughs> if you ain't cheating, drove you ain't me absolutely insane. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm gonna make I, sure I tell Cynthia that. <laughs> yeah. So so so, Tom, just curious, your thought process on the two snakes, bro. How did you even, like, because when you said that, I said, damn. Man, he sound like he didn't either wish, like, he could do this to somebody. He didn't really, like, you <laughs> came over this quick, quick, man. Where, so, where, where did that come from? That was another one that was inspired by the Saul theme. Because 
it, again, if you've seen the movie, you know there's always like a way you can get out safely or a yeah. way you can die. So that's why there was, you know, one one crate had a non-poisonous snake and the other uh-huh. one had the whatever, whatever, whatever python. And yeah. so it was just, it was just, it, it was just me almost given a choice because I think my original thing was because obviously we come back into the story and the cages have already been opened. But in my original plan, Sarah was going to not use the poisonous snake. Uh, And actually, you know, I never got to be able to tell this part, but it was like, actually those snakes were non-poisonous in my mind where I was going to go with it and that she was just putting them there to scare them. But obviously when one of you guys takes it down the path of, oh no, this really is poisonous, then we have to go with that and run with it. And so that's what, that's where my expression, it was, it was a, it was a, it was going to be a choose your poison, but neither of them were actually going to be killer. But then once uh, you know, it got taken that direction, we got to keep going with that. Just so everybody knows the name of the, the snake was the North African East Asian Burmese Python rattlesnake. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, the I, most like highly here. venomous snake ever. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so, ju- I'll, I'll, so I'm going to do something that the other two aren't going to be ready for, but we have talked about it before. I don't think they're going to be ready. So we're going to see how it goes. We are going to give y'all a free one minute each story right now. Uh, D's going to start. Uh, I'm going to go, and time's going to finish it. We oh, each wow. get one minute. And it's live. Wow. Okay. Let me get my clock. Let me get my clock ready, man, because I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, bet, I hope you didn't tell D you were gonna do this ahead of time because nobody you I knew. Me. I was the only one who knew. I, I, I have no idea, bro. I did, <laughs> we got a minute. You got one minute, and then the next person gets thirty seconds to clear their thoughts and go. Okay. I say you just go with it, Gary. Just go. I gotta, I gotta, uh, you can only clear, create one character, so or two okay. characters total, so that way we can go right. wherever okay. you want to go. Hold up, Hold you, got up Gary. you gotta start. Damn, Gary, uh, you spot. want me to go first? Yeah. You want me to start? Okay, it's just like season, we'll do this every every Thursday. We're gonna do this from now on. Whoever started uh, that, after, they get to start the story. So, next after the next recap, I'll be starting. Ah, uh, this is a good go. one. Okay, and we got a minute. Okay. Yeah, one minute. All right, let me see. We got to wrap a story up in one <clears throat> in minutes. Three minutes. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is tough. This is tough. I wasn't expecting this, so uh, I'm getting ready to start my timer. <laughs> and three, two, one. Set it in the scene. So Jake's walking down the beach. And as he's walking down the beach, he sees this beautiful lady and he goes up to this beautiful lady. Say, Hey, I think I remember you or I know you from somewhere. And she said, nah, you don't know me from anywhere. And she was like, I'm Jake. I'm Jake. You don't remember me. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw you last night. And she says, no, I, I, I didn't get here last night. I got here this morning. So you have to be mistaken. So she walks off and he walks off again and he's walking past her and he bumps into another lady and he goes, I think I know you from somewhere. And she said, you do look familiar, but I'm not quite sure who you are. But uh, what's your name? And and he goes, oh, I'm Jake. And she goes, she goes, oh, how you doing? You know, my name. Well, you know what? My name doesn't matter. Um, I'll talk to you later. So what you don't know, I don't need my 30 seconds. So what you don't know is Jake is actually the king of Atlantis. He is looking for his new wife. And so that's his that's his only pickup line. He's not used to being around people. So his only pickup line is, you look familiar. So every, every day he comes out of the water, he walks the beach trying to find a girl that's going to fall for the line. And so far we had no luck with the first two. So then he sees his next, his next one he wants to talk to. He walks over to her and he says, hi, you look familiar. And then Stephanie looks at him and says, hey, so do you. I think I've seen you somewhere. And then Jake's like, oh, I think she might be the one. So they actually go out to eat. He invites her to dinner. They go to dinner. Well, while they're at dinner, he lets it slip that he lives in the ocean. He doesn't say if he's on a boat. He says in the ocean. He just let it slip that he lives on the ocean. 
And she's like, oh, that's interesting. Like, what, what do you mean by that? And he starts to dive into it. He's like, well, this is it. Your turn. Wow. This, this is the thing. I am the king of Atlantis, and I have been searching for my queen for so long, and I can never figure out where she is. I feel like she's just hiding, and I've, I've gone through life so long just, just wanting to find her. Is there any way that you're it, Stephanie? And he begins to look at her, and she goes, you know what, Jake? I've been looking for love just like you. And they get closer and closer, and right as they're about to kiss, the room goes black. Ugh. Jake wakes up. He starts rubbing his eyes. Man, those dreams are getting so crazy. I don't know what in the world is going on here. Jake puts on his red polo and his khaki pants, and he gets to walking outside. And then somebody stops him and says, Jake, you look familiar. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're Jake from State Farm. And then Jake just went about his merry way onto State Farm to film his next commercial. <laughs> so, so that's how it's done. That's, that's what how we, we do. do. And yeah. we're going to do a little special treat. D'Angelo doesn't know this. I just decided to do it now. We're going to give you a 30 second alternate ending from each of us. I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have 30 seconds. I'll go first so you can have wow. a second. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yep. So as they're at dinner, he's like, I, I'm the king of Atlantis. I've been looking for my bride. You know, things have been going forever. It has been working. She looks at him and says, you're crazy. I don't know who you are. I invited you. I want to go to dinner with you and do all this stuff. But what you're saying is nonsense. And just then her boyfriend walks up and he punches Jake in the face. And Jake cries as he walks back into the ocean. Oh, wow. So oh. sad. <laughs> Your turn, D. Thirty I seconds. Okay. So, Stephanie, you 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 do remember me, right? Yeah, Jake. You know I still remember you. So, Jake, ever so softly. Oh, so she remember me. She remember this. So, Jake takes his hand. He goes from the small of her back and goes down, and he grips the back of her booty and he squeezes. She says, "No." Jake, what are you doing, man? I told you not to do that, man. You know, there's only two people in my life that's ever done that to me, and you're not one of those. So don't you ever touch me ever again. She scuffs and she walks off. Wow. So, so <laughs> that is how it's done. We just come up off the top of our head and we continue our stories. So this is basically the whole premise of Serve the Story. All of our stories are done this way. We just give yeah. ourselves two minutes to do a whole story, and then we yeah. have different parts. We each get, uh, what is it? We each get uh, two, f four parts each. Yeah. So yeah. 12 total. So we each get four parts. So that's what it's fun. We just have fun to, going to top of our heads. I had to keep it very generic, Gary. I had to keep it very generic because I don't <laughs> want to give anything away. Because uh, we have so many stories that we we're going to do. Right. There's so many stories, this and I don't want to use one. We have 11, I believe. So. Yes. And yes. what I need you to do for me, yep. if you watch this, if you watch this, what I need you to do for me is in the comments section, put who your favorite ending was so we can settle this debate. You had a minute to end. We had 30 seconds. You had a, you had a minute. We had 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm just hey, giving them a taster. You were really good, though, Tom. You were really so, good. <laughs> they can judge our alternate endings when we post our alternate endings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to take the gun. I, clip I'm a lot better when, when I have two minutes and not a minute because you got to make sure you got to get a lot of information in that one minute when you creating characters and stuff. So, yeah, you this know, is I'm, fun. I'm, I'm used to making magic in one minute or well, less, if you know what I mean. Well, we had to finish a whole story in three minutes. Usually we have 12 minutes per uh, chapter. So, yeah. or eight minutes per chapter. So, well, yeah. So, 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 ideally, what you want to do is you want to pull something out of what you heard the first time and pull it into your story, so it'll connect the two. So, yeah, I, I honestly have no idea what Gary said in his first minute because I was <laughs> looking to use certain trigger words into uh -huh. my story so it all tied together. <laughs> well, that was fun. Good idea, Gary. So that is our process. That is our first recap show. Time. I'll let you take us out. All right, fellas, well, we appreciate y'all tuning in for the special recap of Chapter 1 of Serve the Story. 
And we'll be back after the second chapter. You got to end this with the voice. You got to end this with the voice. Oh, oh, yeah, I will. And we'll be bringing on the animator next time, right? For uh, All right, Nick will. We'll bring bring on the animator. And we appreciate you for tuning in to serve the story. Tune in next week to find out what happens next. (laughs) We out! (laughs) Yeah. <laughs>